With me in the studio today, I have my dear friend, Dr. Avery Jackson. It's so fantastic having you in the studio. You're, you're, you're brilliant. You're Thanks brilliant. For you're a surgeon. Me. And Thank just you. give us a quick two minute, one minute rundown on who you are, Dr. Dr. Avery Jackson. You're a surgeon. So I'm a neurosurgeon, so I do brain surgery and spine surgery, uh, training at multiple hospitals, uh, complex spine is my specialty, and I'm in private practice. And you also, have, you also have a patent on some special um, spine... So I have, I have, <laughs> uh-huh. so I have, uh, I have uh, three, three companies, uh, three, four companies, and I have uh, one of the companies called Optical Spine owns something called the Visipro, and that's just a... It's a really neat uh, endoscopic device that assists with spine surgery. That's incredible. So now the reason I wanted you to t- say all of this, and you have multiple degrees, you just quickly, very quickly go through the different levels. So many degrees. So uh, undergrad, University of Chicago, uh, Wayne State uh, for medical school, uh, Northwestern University for my general surgery internship, Penn State for neurosurgery uh, training, and then complex spine fellowship in neurosurgery at the Medical College of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. I, okay, I need, I need it. That's like a thesis. That's phenomenal. Yeah. It's, that is powerful. Now, the reason that, that I, and I know this about you, I know how brilliant you are, I know how much you've studied, but despite that, you have such an interesting background. I want you to tell the listeners about you growing up and what you went through because this, this particular show, we're going to talk about ADHD and does it really exist? Is it really a disease? Is it what it's, they say it is? Right. So I was a very active kid, So, and you'd say I was hyperactive, and I was even labeled as having ADHD. I had a single mom, and, and my mom uh, would oftentimes have to drop me off at her, uh, my godmother's house, because at some point she just couldn't handle me, right? I was just all over the place. Oh, and, I, and she described, I wasn't a bad kid. I was just, just busy, really busy, busy very busy, had a lot of energy. <laughs> I spoke very fast. I wrote fast. Everything was really very fast. <laughs> And uh, one of the things it but was you knew that, what you were doing, didn't you? you yes, knew what I did. You were doing. I did, and yeah. I think and one of the one of the pieces about ADHD that's yeah. really concerning to me in yeah. today's society yeah. is is that people are labeled with ADHD, and in fact, it could be either um, an issue with the, the fact that you're just a, a really active person. Yeah. Um, we know that the your brain, as you mentioned, oftentimes we can function our subconscious at, at quantum speeds. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe that there are certain children who think very fast. And one of the problems that we were having and the problem that I had was mm-hmm. is that in the school system, mm-hmm. I was taught the traditional way, but it was so slow for me that I couldn't process the information well. So mm-hmm. instead, it didn't keep my attention. Mm-hmm. And so since it didn't keep my attention, I'd look out of the window or I'd have to focus on other things. To keep you kind to of keep in the me zone. Calm, yeah. To keep me calm. And it was, and so I was initially a C student actually wow. in, in elementary school. And it was because of that. And I had a passion for a lot of different things, but because of that traditional system, it was really a challenge. And as a matter of fact, the, the um, impulses were so strong that to sit still and to hear data or stimuli come at me very slowly was literally painful. Like I could feel mm, that is these shocks going down my spine because my entire, my whole being wanted to process uh, life, everything. Like I wanted, I want the smells of life, the, the, the sounds, like everything I wanted to process in a way that I could, I could handle it. And so it was coming at me so slow that there was this huge residual buildup. And I could just feel it, just these shocks down my spine. Like a and frustration just kind of, because your it wasn't your mind was just your body was too slow for your mind. Yeah, and, and that's, just, that can happen in. And you know, I was a specialist in ADHD when I yeah. practiced clinically. I specialized in TBI, traumatic brain injury, and yeah. learning disabilities. And I never, I never even called it ADHD because that name came out in the early eighties, sort of yeah. late seventies, early eighties, and uh, late seventies, early eighties. And I remember our professor telling us that this is going to be a problem, this label, the DSM-3 released the label. So it's mm-hmm. a psychiatric label, and psychiatric labels are always a bit questionable because they're not based on science. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the history um, scientifically of ADHD, it doesn't actually exist. Now, I know already the listeners are thinking, but I've got this child, yeah. and Avery's just described something. But it's not actually ADHD yeah. we're talking about. We're talking about 
people that think differently. Yes, and there you have people that are brilliant. And so, everyone's yes, brilliant. Yes, everyone's but, brilliant. But the process and of things differently. The process, and so, and for the parents that are listening to this, uh, you know, please don't do your children a disservice. Please understand that you have brilliance among you. Okay? Exactly. You have brilliant children, and what you have to do is is not with prayer, um, with the the five step process that you have, the, uh, the twenty year. the learning process, and then the twenty one day um, uh, brain detox. Brain detox. Those pearls of wisdom for can be applied to your children in particular and can really help them focus and understand the environment in which they're interacting with. Okay, And so it's extremely important, not only in terms of learning and education, of course, but just interacting with life. the world and life. And the, the level, the way the stimulus comes in into their ears and their eyes and their is, brain. you know, and their brain, they have to be able to process that information in a way that is, is comfortable for them. What's really important, I've also noticed, is, is that the focus in someone who has this very active mind is one quick mechanism or technique that helps is if you can divide their focus among um, different modalities, that is to say, mm -hmm. for instance, classical music. There have been studies that have shown that so classical maybe. music mm -hmm. has, helps the brain, helps brain function. Mm -hmm. So music can take away a certain amount of their attention and still uh, help their brain. And then if you can divide their attention and they're doing something else, like in prayer, or they're thinking about a scripture that's, that they're kind of bathing in throughout the day and focusing on that, then the rest of their attention can focus, say, on the specific homework or the specific task. And by dividing their focus into two or three parts, it now slows, it doesn't slow their brain down, but now by separating the attention into two or three different segments, they can handle the speed at which basic information is coming into their ears, into their eyes. That's fantastic advice. So it's super important. And so from someone who that has is, been there, mm. I've learned that not only when as a youngster, but also the way that I studied in uh, in college mm -hmm. and the way that I studied in uh, in medical school was that I would turn on the music. I would have a scripture that I would I would kind of really just meditate on, and by and then I and then now that those two pieces are going, then I could focus squarely on the information that I was studying, and it was just the right cadence to to absorb the information and uh, and and be effective. The other piece was speed reading, and what was interesting in speed reading in college is yeah. it wasn't so fast that. It wasn't so much that I'm reading fast. It so, was a, the mm, speed reading, the content you was... You found your space that was good for you. That's space that was good for me and speed reading. Speed reading. And, and also retention. People yeah. think that speed reading is just about speed, but it's not. The, the biggest emphasis is actually on, on the retention the understanding of and the understanding read of what you've read. And the building of the memory. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another piece that yes. was extremely helpful. I had to work against, in the early 80s, I had to work a lot against the speed reading trend. Oh. And I'd have these patients, I can read 2,000 words a minute, but they couldn't understand the thing they read. So that's not really what you want to yeah, do. You want to all. read at the speed that you are comfortable with. And for someone, it'll be 200 words a minute. For someone else, it will be 1,000. Right. You've got to find your pace where you can actually get the understanding. Right. So what you've given is some incredibly practical advice and a lot of hope. That, And I think one of the things that we need to take, there's so much to take, and we'll have to have more discussions about mm -hmm. this. But one of the important things, things to take out of this is that you actually manage the situation you've given some incredibly good tips and that there's actually a way forward for people I have um, in my practice as I said I would work with learning disability and not ADHD because ADHD doesn't really mm. exist what we have as you've so clearly described is people that think differently and we can't box people all of us think differently but there's a that society is geared towards a certain type of thinking mm -hmm. and if you don't fit in that box then you're going to have a problem so before the advance of technology, it was it was it was a little bit less. We didn't have as much referral, but with the ad, uh, the advance of technology, that has expanded, and now we have a, this this trend and this it's fashionable to say, oh, I'm ADHD as an adult, ADHD, it's being used as, as an excuse for everything. That's right. And it's not actually in existence. We are allowing something to take over our minds that isn't actually true. It's much more of a reorganization of our minds. So we need to get that label away because labels lock us in and focus in on what the real issue is. Yeah. In our discussions, you've told me about the power um, of influence of your mom. Your mom did something, and you've just said there that it's so important as a parent to not just 
to spend the time and to not just listen to what the world is telling you. Can you right. share that? So my mom uh, did not label me with ADHD as she others refused, wanted to. She, she refused to. And because she didn't give me the medications that would have applied for ADHD, the, the stimulants, uh, the Ritalin and Which so act forth. Like cocaine in the brain. Right. It, it allowed me to go on to higher education and do, and do better things. Had I, my brain been dumbed down, I would never been. would have been able to go to the top universities Your memory. or and my memory wouldn't have been there and then emotionally. emotionally and then graduating from a university that has more Nobel laureates than any other university in the in the world which oh is which gosh. is University of Chicago that is phenomenal graduating from uh, a neurosurgery residency a year early uh, has never happened uh, and that happened with me so those are wow. some of the the pieces that would have never happened had I been given you medications. You may not have even gone into medicine. Maybe not we, even medicine. I wouldn't have passed the tests. I wouldn't have been able to study and that, focus. This is powerful and something that is worth emphasizing because I saw this in my practice, that the, the, the deterioration in memory and behavior with kids on, this, on these drugs, that's why I used to wean them off the drugs. And this is what you've, you've shown. It affects your memory, your cognition, your functioning, your behavior, your emotional, your social. This is not something that we can play around with. And I know this is a message that's quite hard to hear for some parents. We don't want them to go into a series of guilt. I mean, it's sorry, a sense of guilt. We want parents to realize we're here to help them. And there's a lot on my site to help parents to understand more about this. And we're going to have a lot more discussions um, to just explain these concepts. Do you have any final words that you could say about... Sure. And I would say that uh, the, the stimulants um, are not really Thank helping you. the children. I think instead, focus on attention, focus on diet because the sugars aren't helping, and focus on exercise. And if you do that for your child, you will find that they will stabilize and be very happy, and so will you. I want to re-emphasize that. We have to take a holistic approach. We have to look at the child in context. Who are they? How are they? They not don't put them in a box. We have to make sure that they are eating real food, real food mindfully that they're using their mind. To that end, I have a book called Think and Eat Yourself Smart. And a program. Which is a wonderful book, by the way. I've read it. It's great. Oh, it's, I think well, you want to mind also, so thank you. But that's really good and based on my experience. It really helps people to understand how to eat and properly and eat the food to, food to nut uh, give nutrition to your brain. I mean, you know as a neurosurgeon, if you're going to feed your children high fructose corn syrup, GMO-based products, they that's that's contributing. It's a huge contributor, not getting enough exercise because they're sitting too still but on the iPhones and watching TV. We have to get them moving. We have to have them running around. And these are really simple, practical things mm -hmm. that are that I, I did in my practice with my patients. I would get them off the medications. I would get them into eating healthy, into exercise, and then work on teaching them how to learn, how to organize the environment. Um, and in terms of the, um, just you know, in terms of organizing the environment, you gave some incredibly good mm -hmm. tips in terms of breaking it up and categorizing and breaking it down. So, mm -hmm. one more thing, just about the Ritalin, um, and these different versions of Ritalin. This is a drug, not a pill popping solution to people, your children being busy. We need to recognize that the research actually does show that it is neurotoxic to the brain and actually causes brain damage and sets our children up for a lot of other issues. It was always my objective in my practice to get children off medication because it's very addictive and it doesn't actually help at the time or long term. And then we'll have a lot of parents that will say, oh, but it does, they karma, they this, but you've actually numbed down their ability to process. And I'm, the reason I'm saying that is that you said that you had a desire to experience the sensory perceptual world, and it was frustrating, and there was this residual delay. If you give someone Ritalin, they, you're going to make, you're going to actually take away, you're going to numb the brain, you're going to take away a whole part of the developmental yep. process. Yep. And that requires being having attention detail and, and spending time with your children, exactly. which means that you have to allow them to play and be children, exactly. as opposed to putting them in the corner and drugging them so then they're quiet. Exactly. Right? That's not helping damaging them, the brain. that's damaging the brain, it's not helping them. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a lot on my site on mm -hmm. Ritalin and the dangers and how to withdraw and what, how to get back into healthy eating patterns and so on. Mm -hmm. Dr. Avery, thank you for being here. You've been amazing. And I can't wait to have you back on the show again because your advice and knowledge is invaluable. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.